Hey, what's up, everybody? Before we get into today's CAD vs. CAD tournament highlight, I just wanted to remind you that we have been adding a lot of the models from the tournament to the library over at TooTallToby.com. So if you ever want to challenge yourself to see if you can build these models yourself and to use the clock to see how fast you can construct these 3D models from a 2D drawing using any 3D CAD system, visit us at TooTallToby.com. You can get started totally for free with a free account. And I hope you guys enjoy today's CAD vs. CAD tournament highlight video. You guys all got it. You guys are all in tune with the universe. All right, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Let's roll this volume down. This next CAD vs. CAD battle featuring M from the United States, our number three seed using plasticity, going up against Dom from the United States, our number six seed using SolidWorks. This CAD vs. CAD battle begins in three, two, one, go! What is the mass of this multi-body part or assembly in XXX.X grams? Both of our runners are taking a screen capture. Both of our runners are looking at the model and trying to come up with a plan. This model is made from millimeters as a unit, and for the material, it says C-Billum material, C-B-O-M. So it looks like one of the parts is made from American Cherry, and one of the parts is made from ABS. Interesting, interesting. Looks like we've got ourselves a snow globe. We've got ourselves a hollow globe. Looks like there's a hole in the bottom, so you can fill that thing with fluid. And it looks like there's a note here that says the globe seats perfectly in the base. There's no gap. So let's flip over to this CAD vs. CAD battle and see what these guys come up with. So here we see we've got Dom on the right. And Dom looks like he has jumped in using SolidWorks and started his first sketch. And it looks like we've got M on the left with Plasticity taking his time, trying to come up with a game plan, trying to think about which features he's going to be using for this thing. It's great to be able to jump in right away and start creating CAD, but if you notice, it looks like Dom actually ran into a little bit of a hiccup. And so, is he able to clean that thing up? That's the question. Yeah, this is going to be at, an interesting one, to say the least. Look at how quickly Plasticity was able to make that sphere. It's almost like he just was able to drag and drop that in from a primitive. That's interesting. He's probably looking at this thing more as primitives, like a sphere, cylinder, you know, those different shapes where in SolidWorks or in parametric modeling, we would look at it more like a sketch or revolve. You know, how do we go from a, a 2D sketch to a feature? Looks like in plasticity, it's more about kind of working from some base features. I like the comments in chat. Looks tougher than the snowshoe, right? I told you guys, I called it. I said the hockey puck's gonna be the worst. But I also think, you know, it's one of those things that the easier the part, the harder it gets by far. Yeah. Interesting to see Dom here. So in SolidWorks, we can do what's called multi-body design, but it looks like Dom has opted to turn this thing into an assembly with these different parts. Oh, and running into that SolidWorks bug with the whole Z-Up template thing. Man. See how he handles this one. So, of course, the challenge with with uh, 3d cad and with engineering in general is not just how to create one part but how to create multiple parts that are all going to work together and fit together and that certainly is the challenge with these components you've got the uh uh the the sphere the ball the snow globe and then you've got the wooden base and the two components really need to fit together you really need to figure out the geometry from one before you're going to be able to finish the geometry on the other and so very interesting it is. It's one of those things that I hate to say it, and the Fusion people out there are probably wondering what you're talking about, because in the world of Fusion, you base everything off components. So if right. you stack a component in a component, it's an assembly. However, your file is a component, and if it has a body, it's just an individual component, right? right. Like Right now, it's. I feel like I'm safe to say it, but you could have drew all profiles in one set and then split them up later versus keeping them together. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're going to see what happens here. It looks like um, Dom is trying to do what we call an in-context uh, feature here. He had to save the assembly before he was able to do that, and now he's probably going to be creating some type of an in-context feature here, whether that's a, uh, 
uh, cavity or it looks like, yeah, it looks like he opted to go with a cavity there. And uh, I'm kind of glad he did. There was, there was, that was one of the gotchas with this model. You see how he was able to create a cavity there, but look what he left himself with. Uh, and so now he's going to have to try to figure out how to clean that up. And of course, uh, the whole world is watching. And so he's going to try to figure out how to do this as quick as possible. It's kind of like having the machinists out on the floor waiting for you to give them the, the model so they can start <laughs> writing the G code. And so it's not always the prettiest solution. Sometimes right. you're just trying to get something that works. I don't think you understand that there's got to be a slip fit tolerance between these two parts. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. The real, the real thing I would be curious about is I hope Don's boss doesn't see him competing in these <laughs> because it might bring up a whole new world of problems at the end of the day. Oh, I love how he's doing this. He's got, he decided to split them into multiple bodies and then he decided, to, then he was able to use the delete body command. I love it. I think that's a great, a great way to get there. But M is hot on his heels, getting this globe in place and getting this thing hollowed out. So this is definitely going to be close here. This is definitely going to be close. We're going to be watching both of our runners, trying to see how they solve this thing. These are not easy models and we're only, we're less than five minutes into this challenge here. We might already be seeing an answer dom comes in with an answer 277 grams that is not correct that is not correct so very very nice uh uh very very nice but dom is actually typing into the chat while he is competing uh he says with regards to your comment his boss knows it's all good <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go so dom came in with an answer 277 grams that is not correct so now what dom is going to do is he's going to look at the drawing he's going to look at his models he's going to try to figure out what exactly he did wrong what was he missing was he missing something that was on the print and uh, that ended up leading to the incorrect answer he's going to make sure that after he finds one thing that was missing that he's not missing anything else uh, meanwhile you can see m on the left is now already moving on to that rectangular base so uh, this is where the pressure really kicks in we've got dom on the right here trying to model this thing up trying to figure out what he was missing we've got m on the left using plasticity this is you know i might have to fire this up next week on my youtube channel and model these on my end and call it the old third throwback thursday yeah or should i call it too tall toby thursday well dom comes in with a second answer here phil and the answer is 175.5 grams and that is not correct not correct so i'm sorry dom that is two incorrect answers it looked like you were on the right track any idea how to change the Z axis problem? Yes, indeed. We do have an idea how to fix that. You got to make better templates, new templates. Uh, but wow. And Jim, you calling for the clock of doom. And yes, indeed, it is time for the clock of doom. So the way that the CAD tournament works here, the two tall Toby speed modeling tournament works is if one of our runners answers incorrectly twice, then they can no longer earn the point. However, the other runner needs to come up with the correct answer in order to earn the point. And so Dom has answered incorrectly two times, and now it's going to be up to M to come up with the correct answer, but he's only going to have five minutes to come up with that correct answer. If, Do if M cannot come up with the correct answer, we all win because we get to see another match between these two Titans. So... I thought you were going to say we all win a taco from Taco Bell. And we all win a taco from Taco Bell. <laughs> and A-W-E-R-C-E -E in the chat says, I wish I could have been a part of this. Just finding out about it. Don't worry, my friend. We're going to have another tournament in summer. You can definitely enter that. In the meantime, to get your fix, you can join us every Monday on Model Monday Live. And you can sign up and try to do some of the challenges at TwoTallToby.com. So we definitely got you covered. If you got that speed modeling itch, we got you covered. Josh. Taco Friday. Yeah, That's Josh. right. Taco Friday. Let's go, Josh Kane. So three minutes and 45 seconds left. We see that M is modeling through this thing. He's got the, uh, he's got the um, globe modeled up. He's got the base modeled up. Now he's just got to get those two together create the geometry for that base. Of course, if, if neither of our runners get it, we will ask the chat. We're not gonna ask the chat yet, but if you're out there in the chat and you're modeling this, I know A-R-E-W-C-E, -E, you said you think you got this. Well, listen, just wait till the end. And if neither of our runners get it, you can, uh, you'll have a chance to answer in the chat. 
We saw during the grudge match, which was a match between our fusion champion, Rambro's Workshop, and our Model Monday Live champion, Aaron C. It was actually Dom who snuck in and stole all the points at the end uh, by answering correctly from the chat. So Uncle Feast Pound says, got it. I think he's not sure if he's actually got it. Interesting to see M here on the left using plasticity, doing the same, running into the same issue that Dom ran into. But look at how differently he's able to resolve it. That is pretty cool. Uh, with plasticity, you can just kind of push pull surfaces there. Direct editing solvers are super advanced uh, compared to some of the CAD systems I've used. And uh, I love seeing that kind of push pull resizing from plasticity. Shout out to plasticity. Not only a competitor today, but also sponsoring the tournament. Love it, love it, love it. You can pronounce my name A Ruse. You got it, my man. Big B from AZ says, Dirty Dom. Dirty, dirty, dirty. It's always crazy seeing a new CAD software like uh, Plasticity out there where I'm not saying anything bad about this and I'm not saying anything bad about the person. It's that software looks amazing in those crazy niche workflows. Mm hmm. But some simpler stuff like this might be a little bit painful where we have that on the Autodesk side too, where PowerMill is a five axis software. And if you try to use it for three axis, you'll lose your mind because uh -huh. it's so overly complex. Well, I gotta say I'm super impressive see, seeing M, super impressed seeing M uh, work through this. And like that challenge there, you know, those two faces are supposed to be coplanar. It's so cool how he's able just to pick the one face and then bring them together and make them coplanar. So really, really impressive, impressive seeing this. Uh, this is, this is so cool. 100%. I saw some of that direct model editing and feature manipulation in the, the demo videos. And it's, I get to think back to times where I wish I had tools like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. There's definitely been spots. Matab in the chat says, I know how this clock of doom makes you feel so much heartbeat. Yeah. Agree, agree, agree. All right, so we're coming down to the final 30 seconds here. And we're taking a look here at uh, uh, M. We're going to give M here a chance. I know that... Uh, with plasticity, you have to do a little bit of, of uh, manual uh, calculations to get the the correct uh, to get the correct mass here. So we're gonna give M a chance here to get that that correct answer in. But here we are. We're coming down. M going for a buzzer beater. Uh, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to get that mass for both of those parts. So we may give him like a, a small little buffer here. Kind of want to see what his answer is. Matab counting it down. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And M coming in with an answer, 167 grams. And that is so close, but that is not correct. That is not correct. It's very, very close. It's going to be a heartbreaker. Guys, if you guys out there in the chat were able to come up with the correct answer, go ahead and type it into the chat. Dom, if you were able to come up with the correct answer, type it into the chat. So we see here Dom coming in 167.88, Andrew 167.88, uh, Adrian 167.88. Yes, that is correct. 167.9 is the correct answer. The tolerance is plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. But wow, super impressive there from our plasticity runner. And well done, well done. He had it correct, but I guess forgot the decimals. Uh, yep, that may have been what it was. Uh, we, uh, we are looking for that answer. 167.9 was the correct answer there. So, so close from M. Wow, wow, wow. Very, very impressive. Aruz coming in 170, a little bit high there, 167.